Hey there, me again. So, since it's December and the year is coming to a close, I thought it'd be a good way to wrap up this year and talk about some of my favorite film photos from this year and show you guys some of my favorite scenes that I captured on celluloid. So, I've got a short list of my favorite photos from each month that I took, and I've got them on my phone here, so I can look at them and kind of explain them to you guys in a little bit more detail. And yeah, let's get into it and start with January. So January in the Midwest, as you can imagine, was very, very cold and I didn't take any film photos in January. So the photo I've got for January is a kind of runner-up sort of photo from December around Christmas time from 2021. And it kind of counts because I didn't develop or scan it until the new year. So I didn't see the photo until 2022. So it kind of counts. But this photo is a photo I took in Arizona of these two palm trees. And I took it pretty late at night, probably at like 1030. And I wanted to see if I could get a star trail. So I set my Bronica up with Portrait 400. I think it was the last frame of the roll. And I just put up my uh, cable release onto the Bronica and set the exposure time for like two and a half hours. I think that's how long I exposed the photo for. And it turned out amazing. So this photo is actually a six by six photo and I cropped it to a four by five aspect ratio, I think it was. And it just, it worked a lot better. It cut out a couple of the distracting elements. There was a slight flare in the corner and there was a little bit of a corner of a building in the other side of the photo. So it was really nice to cut out all the distractions and just have the palm trees and all the stars and that little trail from a plane in the sky, which I think is really, really cool. But as somebody who's taken a lot of night photos and a lot of long exposures, I think this is one of the best I've ever taken. So in February, me and my friend Jared went to Daytona Beach with his family, and that was super, super fun. <laughs> I did some night photography as well as photography in the daytime, and a couple of the night photos that stood out to me were this one of just kind of the buildings, the hotels and stuff along the beach in Daytona Beach. Um, I just kind of went out onto one of the boardwalk sort of things that takes you out onto the sand, and I saw this line of buildings and I was like, man, that looks great. So I had a roll of Cinestill 800T in my Canon P, and I rattled off a long exposure. I think it was, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, something around there. So this next photo of Napoli Pizza was taken not very far from the photo of the buildings that I just talked about, um, but I think it turned out really, really cool. I like the side profile of the building with the palm tree kind of right in the middle of the sign, and I just really love how this exposure turned out. I love how the palm tree just kind of fades to black and starts blending with the sky, and... I love how just how much of a glow that this photo has. Um, and that's one of my favorite things about shooting 35 millimeter at night as opposed to 120 is I feel like 35 millimeter has a little bit less clarity and it just gives all of the ambient light this sort of glow, which looks really awesome. And I continued that role of Cinestill 800T in the daytime the next day and I took these three photos, which I think are really, really awesome. Particularly, I think the one of the kind of beach gate that has the little wave shapes on it, I think that's so cool. Just such a cool little like unique detail about Daytona Beach is those little gates. And I think the way that this photo is broken up is really, really nice and it's really well balanced. I like that there's the uh, traffic free beach sign on the right side and then the colorful wall and the lamppost on the left side just, just really, it, it makes the photo really well balanced and I love it. I also took a couple black and white photos with a roll of Fuji Acros that I had to finish, and this one of the surfers I cropped to the CinemaScope aspect ratio, I think. 
And I just love the way it looks. I love that there's a little bit of like haze in the background. So like the buildings and the other people that you can see way in the distance are just kind of in this hazy mist and it looks really cool. And both of the surfers are in such a like badass pose in this photo and I think it's awesome. All right, so moving on to March. March was a very busy month because I did two trips, one with my girlfriend, Christina, where we went to Memphis, New Orleans, and Pensacola, Florida. And I've got a bunch of photos from that. And I also went to Vegas and Zion National Park, which really, really good photographic opportunities there. Lots of variation in my photography this month. So let's start with the photos from New Orleans. Uh, I took this photo, which I think is really cool, how it's kind of broken up. There's this kind of industrial sort of building in the background. Uh, this photo's a picture of the line of people that is always outside of Café du Mont, which is a French-style café. It's very famous in New Orleans. And there's just a huge line outside, which I think is kind of an iconic symbol of New Orleans. It's what a lot of people think of, is this huge line that's always outside of this café every day. I also really like to put foreground elements in the side of my photos, so like in the side or in the corner or something like that, just kind of popping out and adding a little splash of interest or color or maybe a leading line or something. And I think these palm trees really kind of add something to this photo, kind of get you a sense of what the climate is like in New Orleans. And yeah, I think it's a really cool photo. I also took this photo, which is a really cool street photo, kind of a low-key New Orleans moment just kind of captures like a calm vibe of what might be going on at any moment in New Orleans. You could see a guy riding by on a bike with his drum. And I think that just kind of screams New Orleans, but in a not so cliche way, I guess. And then this photo screams New Orleans in a very New Orleans way is this, uh, funeral procession, I think it is. I can't remember what they're called in New Orleans, but they do these like really happy celebrations when they do funeral processions. And that's what this one was, I'm pretty sure. Um, but this is the band and they have hats that say Rockas on it. I don't know if that's like their official name, but I think it's a cool little detail. And they're all in such cool poses and I just really like it. I would like it a little bit better if the trumpeter was a little bit farther to the right, that way his trumpet didn't get cut off. And I wish the guy that's playing the trombone, I wish his foot wasn't cut off. But other than that, I think it looks really cool. All right, now let's move on to Vegas. And this photo really comes to mind when I think of my Vegas trip. And this is a shot of the Bellagio pool. We were staying at the Bellagio on our trip, which was really fun. This trip was for my buddy's bachelor party, so we did it up big, and it was really, really nice. And this photo is one of those that looks like it could be a painting or something. It's just really, really nice. I love the quality of the light and the color, how yellow everything is, and it's very pastel. And just all of the different groupings of people that are in the pool, just hanging around on the chairs by the pool, all the umbrellas in the foreground and on the other side of the pool, kind of towards the mid-ground, um, just looks really, really nice. And it's really colorful, really bright, super fun. Then this one might be my favorite one that I took in Vegas. This one's like very magical. It's like this little family moment with two of the kids on their parents' shoulders and the Bellagio lit up with the Bellagio fountain going, which is very, very classic. That's an iconic thing that everybody thinks of when they go to Vegas is the Bellagio fountain. And yeah, it just has this really magical quality. It's not super sharp um, because I was hand holding, and I think this was at like a 15th of a second or something like that, but I think it turned out really, really well. Now this photo is probably my favorite one that I took in Vegas in terms of capturing the city and what life is like on the streets. So this one was taken outside of the Venetian, I believe, and I was just at crosswalk and the light was really, really nice. And these two street performers walked by and I just caught this amazing light on everything and everybody. And this was with Portra 160, I believe. And, and just one thing I love about this photo is no one has a phone. No one has a phone in their hand. So it's another one that you kind of can't tell what time period it was taken in because none of these clothes that anyone's wearing scream like modern. Um, 
fashion or anything like that. And I don't know, it's just such a cool scene. All right, do I have any more from Vegas? I don't think so. But I do have one from our way back from Vegas, which was in Zion National Park. Now, me and my friend Jared drove to Vegas and drove back. And along the way back, we stopped in Zion. And we only were there for like an hour. And I didn't, I don't think I got as good of photos as I could have. But I definitely made the most of my time. And this was the last photo I took in that hour. And it's an amazing landscape. My favorite part about this photo is the layers. The sky is one, and then the back mountain range creates a very distinct layer, and then there's the hill that kind of rolls off towards the bottom right of the photo. And then you've got the road and the guy standing, probably looking at a picture he just took in the foreground, which gives you a really, really nice sense of scale. The boy getting married today. Let's go. So in April, my buddy Tyler, who had the bachelor party for, got married and I took my camera along and I think I was shooting Kodak Gold or Kodak Ultramax, probably Kodak Ultramax uh, at this wedding. And I've got this photo of me and Tyler getting ready, Tyler putting on his suit and I just had my suit jacket left to put on. I decided to snap a quick picture and I think it's an awesome little moment. And then I've got this one from the night before when we did the rehearsal dinner and Tyler and his wife now and both of their parents are all standing there around the table looking at gifts and notes and it's just a really, really sweet moment. The flash really makes this just kind of a very nostalgic sort of feeling. So I love that photo. And then I've got this photo, which is of some of my friends and Tyler's friends sitting around waiting for us to go up on the roof, which was where their wedding was held. And this photo looks like some sort of screen grab out of The Godfather or something. It's so, so funny the way we're all just standing around. Everybody looks super serious. And then you've got Eric in the foreground who looks like he is a mob boss or something. And then the, the, the color temperature of everything looks really, really nice. And I don't know, it's just, it's just badass and super funny that I caught this and it looks so cool. So the other thing I did in April was I went to Lawrence, Kansas to see the KU National Championship Parade because Kansas won the NCAA Basketball Championship. And I went around and did some street photography of all the fans and some of the players going by in their, uh, what do you call it? Their caravan, I guess. Um, and... I got this photo, which is probably my favorite street photo I took all year. And it's this father and daughter, I assume, who are wearing these kind of vintage leather KU jackets. And the dad has a camera in his hand. And there's so many people around wearing KU stuff. And I just love the, the saturation on this photo. I, it, the, all the colors look really, really good and true to life. And it's kind of painterly a little bit, and it just it looks so, so classic. And it's one of those photos that you're not quite sure what time period it was taken in. So in May, I didn't really travel anywhere, but I did take some cool photos. I took this one of a Chinese restaurant, which I think looks amazing. Just the way the sky is kind of got that last bit of light in it. And the way the sign glows just looks so, so good. And I love that it's like completely deserted. There's no life except for in the window. There's a guy, like probably a server or something at the register. And I took this photo of Jungle House, which is a... Uh, plant nursery sort of place where you can go buy plants um, and I think it just looks really cool the sign's really cool I love that there's pallets outside so it looks like there's some kind of activity going on either like a shipment coming in or going out and all of the pots and stuff on the side and all the plants on the side of the building just looks really really cool the other thing I did in May was I went to a carnival and this carnival was really really fun to go to and I got some really, really good night photos. 
So this one is kind of an overall sort of sort of wide shot of a couple of the rides, the Ferris wheel and uh, this crazy spinning ride, which I'm not sure what it's called, but it, it looked awesome and it was great for night photography. And I love that I captured motion in this one. It looks super cool. And then I've got this one, which is a closer up shot of that spinning ride, which, oh my gosh, it's so saturated. And it looks like, this reminds me of like Super Mario Kart or something, when you're on Rainbow Road or whatever that, that Mario Kart course is called. And it just looks super cool and I'm really, really happy I got this one. And then I took one of this ticket booth I really wanted the person at the ticket booth to be like in this window, this little tiny window on the right. Um, but I still, I love the way that the glow kind of emits from this ticket booth and the signs and stuff. I think it just looks really cool and it's really lonely. There's again, nobody in the shot, which I think is kind of interesting. There's one lady way back in the background taking a picture of something, but you really can't see her because she's wearing all black. But yeah, super, super cool. <laughs> So June was another busy month because I went to Chicago and I also went to Castle Rock, Colorado. So I've got quite a bit of photos to show from this and let's start with Chicago. So Chicago, me and my buddy Ethan went and we were testing out Cinestill 400D. I've got a video on that that you can watch, I'll link it up here. And I got some really good street photos. I got this one of a lifeguard station with just really good groupings of people. There's a grouping of people off to the left. There's this lady obviously carrying her dog in a super funny way, and there's this group of ladies with a stroller, which also, it just kind of balances out the composition, makes it look really cool. And I also got this photo, which I think is really nice. The light and the quality of the light looks really nice and glowy. Uh, and this is of a nightclub, and I thought it was interesting to get a photo of a nightclub like in the middle of the day when it's closed and all like gated up and everything. I think that's really interesting. And then the kid riding by on the bike just kind of adds a subject to the photo, which looks good, makes it a little bit more interesting. And then I've got this one, which is of the Chicago Theater, I think it's called, and their glorious marquee. And I did quite a bit of editing to this one to kind of find the right amount of sort of a hazy look. Um, but it looks really good, and I'm glad I put the subway entrance in the foreground. This one looks really cool, and I love that there's this kind of bluish light emitting from the ground, which looks really cool, and it kind of contrasts with the sign a little bit. And also, Ethan and I visited a ton of record stores while we were in Chicago, and this record store, I took a picture, and oh my gosh, it looks so cool. I just love the way that, like, everything turned out. There's enough glow in the sign that looks great, and I'm just really surprised with how it turned out. I thought it was going to be underexposed, but really it looks perfect. I love the amount of contrast it has, and I love all the leading lines with all the records and stuff leading you to the sign, which is really good composition. So now moving on to Castle Rock. I didn't take that many photos because it wasn't that long of a trip, but the ones I did take were really cool. took this one of a butterfly, which looks awesome. I love the way it turned out, and this the type of flower that this butterfly is sitting on is out of this world. It looks so cool, and this was taken with my Bronica S2A on medium format, as I'm sure you probably gathered from the square aspect ratio, um, but yeah, the colors look amazing. took this on probably my favorite film, which is Fuji Pro 400H. This next photo I also took on my Bronica and Fuji Pro 400H, and it's of the Silver Saddle Motel. I just thought the sign was a really cool shape, and what I wanted to do with this composition was make it stick up a little bit from the mountain range in the background, so it kind of went into the sky and stood out a little bit from the background, and I think it worked pretty well. I think it's a little bit busy on the right side with those power poles and stuff, but you can't have everything. And on the final morning of this trip, we went to a little car show, and this is my favorite photo that I took from this car show. It's of a little Datsun 2000 Roadster, which is one of my favorite cars. They're just a really, really cool design, and one of my favorite parts about that design is the taillights. So I took a picture of the taillight with the Fairlady 2000 logo on the side of the car, 
and I just tried to center up the tail light as best I could, and I think it looks really, really cool. All right, now we're on to July, and obviously, I did 4th of July stuff. So uh, the 4th of July photos I took were at, they were out in the country, and they were at a high school. I think it was a high school, maybe a high school or middle school, and they did a little fireworks display, and there were people sitting on the bleachers. So I took a few photos of that, and I think this one looks really, really cool. I like that there's people on the bleachers, and the bleachers add a foreground element. It's not just fireworks going off in a blank sky. So it has a little bit of context and a little bit of story, and I think it works pretty well. Now, also, something I did on the 4th of July was I went to a Mexican fiesta, which happens every year in my city. Uh, the best photo I think I took from the Fiesta, though, was not of the Fiesta at all, and it was of this GTR that I assume had been recently imported or recently bought by this owner because it doesn't have a license plate on it, and it was just sitting in the kind of covered driveway area of their yard, and it was surrounded by flowers and plants kind of on the patio, and I thought it looked awesome, and it looks really great in this golden hour light, and yeah, just really cool. I know, cliche, cars on film, whatever, but I'm a car nerd, so I'm going to take pictures of cars. Now, we also went to this fountain show that is in my city as well, and this turned out really cool. I took a couple photos here that I really like. The first one of these two people sitting in these chairs. Uh, I don't think this photo would be near as good if the guy wasn't wearing this hat, because I think the hat makes it. And just the colors on the fountain look so, so cool. Now, I also did go on a trip in July, and that was to Clemson, South Carolina, to see my sister, and also St. Petersburg, Florida, just to go to the beach and have some good, solid beach time in the summer. So from that trip, I chose a couple photos, a couple from each place. This photo is kind of halfway between um, Clemson and Greenville, South Carolina, and it's the Greenville Pickens Speedway. I think it was about 20 minutes away from where we were going, so made sure to stop and get a photo of this because I think it's super cool looking. I just love the sign and the kind of checkered markings on the side of the wall. I think it looks really cool. And the clouds in the sky, really, really perfect for this photo. Now this photo I took on the Saluda River, which is, I think it's called the Saluda River. Anyways, I took it on a river of some sort and I don't know what it is about this photo. I mean, it's not the most interesting subject matter, I guess, but for some reason I just like get drawn into this photo and it's like super calming and I don't know, it's just really, really interesting. Anyways, moving on. Moving on to uh, St. Petersburg. I got this photo of a beach. It's a photo of a beach. I really like it. It looks, it's another one of those that kind of looks like a painting. Uh, the lady sitting with her hat in that lounge chair on the beach looks really awesome and I love that there's some activity going on and I also took this photo which is of Larry's ice cream and Larry's ice cream has a classic truck and a Nash Metropolitan sitting outside which is a car you don't see very often um, but I just loved the colors and the way the light was hitting everything so I wanted to stop and I think one of my favorite things about this photo is just how like bright and kind of yellowish the palm trees are kind of Towards, like in between those two cars. But it's just a really cool scene overall. You get the building itself with the two cars and all the signage, like the sign that's on the truck that says since 1984 and this Larry's sign in the background that says 80 flavors, hot dogs, beer, gelato, and fresh donuts. So really cool wide shot. Now when we got back from that trip, there was a women's rights march held in my city and I took a quite a few photos that I liked there, um, but I got this one of this lady holding a sign that says abortion is healthcare, um, very powerful message, and I love that it's right in front of the Capitol, just kind of gives you a good sense of there's a protest going on, and yeah, just covers the event really well. August, I didn't do a lot of shooting, but I did shoot one of my favorite photos on medium format, and that was of this koi pond. 
So I looked for a composition, and I wanted to get these lotus flowers, these lotus blossoms, and I also wanted to get fish in the foreground. So I looked for a spot where there was a little gap on these lily pads, and I waited, and I took four shots, I think, to finish off this roll, and this was the first one I ended up taking, and it just, it's got like a couple fish in that little gap, and this uh, lotus blossom in focus, and then kind of falling out of focus in the background, and it looks super, super awesome. This is a photo that I think is really, really print worthy, and I did make a print of it actually this year, and it looks really good, so I'm proud of that. Now I didn't do a whole lot in September, but I did go to this hot air balloon event and I took some photos on Fuji Color 200. And honestly, I wasn't super happy with the results for most of the photos, but I did take this one, which I think is awesome. It shows a good portion of the hot air balloons that were there that day. And I think it just shows how many people were out there. And it was really awesome to see since Public events like this haven't been super big the past couple years, and one thing I really love about this photo is the couple that's sitting kind of in the foreground looking at each other, and I think that's really, really cool and adds something to this photo. In October, me and my girlfriend Christina did this awesome shoot doing like these bedsheet ghost photos, and my favorite ones that I took were the ones at the end of the roll, and I did a double exposure with my Bronica by taking the film back off and winding and then putting the film back back on. And I did this, uh, I made this costume with the bed sheet, and I wore some kind of nice wingtip shoes, and I wore a hat, and, a, and I took a pipe out because I thought it would be a cool prop. And I didn't, I talk about this in the video I did about this, which you can watch up here, but... Uh, I didn't mean to do this, but the hat and the pipe both belong to my dad, and my dad passed away a couple years ago, and this just seems like kind of an ode to him. And it was, wasn't even really on purpose, but it's really, really cool that it turned out that way. And I really like this one too, not holding the pipe, just kind of kicked back and relaxed, and yeah, it's just a really, really fun, it was a super fun shoot to do. And I also did this piece, which I think is a really cool kind of conceptual photo, um, just about how we kind of just waste a lot of time on our phones watching mindless stuff. So I, what I did was I bought this Halloween prop, which had like a foot in a uh, kind of like ball and chain sort of thing, and I took the foot off and actually slipped my hand into this plastic fake chain and put the other end on my phone. So it kind of looks like you're constantly being tied to or weighed down by your phone. And I set the phone to play static, which kind of just symbolizes that what we're watching is mindless and useless most of the time. So also in October, Christina and I went to celebrate my birthday in Wichita. And I took a couple cool photos here, like this one of these old German cars. Uh, and man, this exposure turned out amazing, and these are some of my favorite cars of all time, so what else could I ask for? Also, while we were there, I was testing out Lomography's Lomochrome Turquoise, which I hadn't shot yet, and I got this photo of a hearse kind of pointed at this older couple, which kind of gives me this sort of like modern Grim Reaper sort of theme, uh, at least in my head. And this was at a really cool area. It's like a shopping center that has restaurants and stuff, and it's made out of shipping containers. So that kind of adds a little bit of interest to the photo as well. And I love the way all the greenery is spread out throughout this photo. It really breaks up the scene really nicely. All right, November, I didn't do a whole lot of shooting, but me and Ethan and my friend Blake went out and did some shooting in Kansas City at night. And I got this really, really cool photo of the Kansas City Power and Light District sign, um, which I think is a really nice scene because you get some buildings in the background and you have the streetcar, the KC streetcar, which is a little tram thing that goes up and down the street. And I don't know, this scene, this scene is like very complete. I love, I love how it looks. This was on Cinestill 800T with my Canon P. So finally, 
in December. I haven't taken that many photos yet, but I am going back to Arizona for the holidays, so hopefully I can get a lot of nice film photos around then. But I also uh, have already taken some photos of Christmas lights around kind of where I live, and these look really cool. And I think it's cool that there's no snow on the ground yet. It kind of just shows like Christmas is coming, but it's not here yet. And yeah, I've got a plan to do a Christmas time zine, uh, hopefully next next winter, like in maybe in November. I don't know. We'll see how the uh, process plays out. But I think at least a couple of these are going to make the cut. And I just love the kind of glowy quality they all have. Looks really, really nice. These were taken on one of my least favorite films, which is Fuji Superior 400, which I think actually does really well at night, but I just never really get that good of results in the daytime. Oh, so that was a lot of talking. My throat is dry now, and I need to go to the gym. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed those photos. Uh, this is my hundredth video on this YouTube channel, and I am blown away by all the support that I've been given by you guys, and you seem to like the videos, and I've met a lot of you from this YouTube channel and on Instagram and stuff, and you're all really cool, so keep on doing what you're doing, and I will see you bright and early next year. Bye now.